Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Metal Command Podcast. Tony here with you, and today I am bringing you an interview with Norm Skinner. Uh, He has a new solo album coming out called Wicked Wise, and uh, really, really good stuff. I'm really digging the singles that he has released so far uh, for that album. And he also sings in a band called Nivian, so we do talk about that. And, of course, he sang in Imagica for quite some time. So, uh, you know, definitely really killer singer, you know. And I I love bringing guys on this show that may not be as well-known as they should be. And I really love talking to individuals like that. Uh, Norm came on my show only one time, and it was with his previous album called Skinner. But this is a much, but the new Skinner album is a much different thing and different project than what he had going on in the previous band, which he will definitely be talking about. And of course, we're going to touch on a lot of things, uh, you know, as far as his normal band, Nivian, for example, uh, the regular, like more power metal band that he's singing in. And we touch a little bit on the Imagica stuff as well. So with that being said, this is my interview with Norm Skinner of Nivian and, of course, his own band called Skinner. I don't want you to take offense to this, but your first solo album is really nowhere near the level of this thing that the one you're putting out. I mean, musically, I mean, this thing is blows that first record out of the way. I mean, I think that was eight or nine years ago when you came on my show, actually. So um, I'm yeah. really excited. Hopefully we make this more of a regular thing. Uh, now that I'm doing the, the podcast, you know, via video now, but uh, talk about this solo album, man, because the two songs I've heard musically are great. And I noticed too, that you're singing is a little more melodic on this record than say it might've been on some of the past stuff that you've done. Yeah. So, so this solo album, I mean, it picks up literally right after we, we have to actually kind of go back to that first solo album. Mm-hmm. Um, so that first solo album wasn't, I guess in, in all, all senses of it, it wasn't a solo album. That was a band. It was a band called Skinner. Mm-hmm. A few of us had left a magica when it disbanded and we were just going a different, you know, it was still, the pull power thrash type thing. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was the bass player, Jim Pegram's idea to call it Skinner. And I was kind of against it at first because I'm like, you know, I can be a narcissist, but I'm not that big of a narcissist, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, I don't know, but you know, they either like, it sounds cool, you know, and people know who you are and let's do that. And I'm so sure. So we have that album out. Things were going good. It was a brand new band, you know? And then, uh, the, uh, Two, so we had three guitarists in that band, for those that didn't know. Um, and uh, two, one was a father-son duo. He wanted me to, well, he had the money. He had like 20 grand that he got in an inheritance or something from all sold house. And he got hit up by one of those producers that are like, dude, come here. I'll record you guys. I'll give you this top-notch thing. And I could probably get you signed and all that. And we had a meeting about it. I told him, I'm like, that's dumb. That's a waste of money. Yeah, I see these things all the time. You're drinking the Kool-Aid. Don't do it, right? Well, he did it. So he 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 went with uh, another band he was with. And then when he came back, and we were supposed to start recording the follow-up album. He said, well, I'm actually leaving the band. I'm going to do this full-time. And I'm taking all my music with me. <laughs> so I was sort of left high and dry, ready to record a new album with nothing. Um, and that's when I just started. I just started, instead of... Uh, putting a new band back together. I decided I'm like, fine, this is just going to be a solo solo thing moving forward. Skinner will be solo. So I started literally in like 2015 working with just various little artists and uh, songwriters and picking the music and picking what I liked and um, making it more my own style because, um, you know, in a magic and bands like that, it was more thrash speed metal. But I think people know by now seeing me in Navina stuff, I'm more of a power metal guy. I like to mm-hmm. sing. I mean, I can get heavy, obviously, but I, I, I like to change it up. So this new solo album very much incorporates all that I like. It's you got a lot of heavy, a lot of melody. Um, you got fast stuff, slow stuff. You know, I have to have the keys in there because I like that epic sound. And that's sort of how this sort of started. That's how this album came to be, and why there's sure. that difference. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. 
you talked about, you know, like singing more of a power metal style than the thrash stuff, because I'll never forget when I heard, how do I pronounce that fancy Naveen? How do, how is it really pronounced? Well, that's the whole thing, right? We technically the band mispronounces the name. Okay. <laughs> We call it Navayan, and that's because the person who founded the band, uh, Claudius Kramer, who's now in Possessed, he named it Navayan, and they had a mispronunciation of it. So we recorded a song on our second album called Navayan because I wanted it, people to know how it's pronounced, but then we found out we do it wrong. And I think most of the world, uh, it's a, a Nivion. Okay. So you can pronounce it either of the two ways, and we'll say it's right. I, I'll, so we I'll, say Navian. So well, I'm going to say Navian since that's what sure, you're called. Even though N- Navian sounds a little more fancy, but sure, yeah. right? You have to sing. I have to sing with <laughs> right. my pinky up in the air when I do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, but I have to say, what I do love is the fact that your vocals evolved from doing the straight thrash stuff. Because my first encounter of hearing your voice for the first time was with the Magica, because that was a band that. I, I really loved playing on my radio show uh, for a, a very long time. So then I hear Navayan, as we call it, um, and your vo- your vocals completely. Like at first, I'll be honest with you, I didn't realize it was you when I first heard a track by them because I didn't really look at the lineup. But then I looked and saw, man, Norm Skinner's in this band. I'm like, dude, that's cool, man. This guy's singing. And, and then I, you know, I neglected getting the CD. So just so anybody knows. I bought those records from you and I got those things in like three, four days. And I'm, you're in California, I believe, right? And I'm all the way in Ohio. So uh, definitely I'll put a link uh, to uh, your website in the show notes just for anybody out there because um, I got those things pretty quick and they're both really, really killer records. So, uh, but this solo stuff, as we want to call it, Skinner, I think is different musically. Um, I think it's a little more. More like no, I don't want to see rock songs, but you know I would probably say it's it's a little bit more straightforward than a power metal band would be. It's probably Absolutely. the best way to describe it. And you know, obviously, you want a solo band to be a little bit a, a little bit different than what you're already doing. And talk about going in that direction because I think the first Skinner album still had a little bit of that thrash tinge in it. Yeah. Uh, from what I from what I remember, I went back and listened to it, and then of course I listened to the couple new songs you put out and i'm like damn dude this guy this new solo this new skinner thing just completely blows that away so talk about the direction that you went in Uh, so i mean it was more what i like right i mean as a i don't play any instruments for anybody that that wonders i I don't play Mm -hmm. guitar or anything i'm at the mercy of of uh, working with individuals that'll create music for me um i'll i'll restructure it how i want i create all the vocal melodies and the lyrics and everything, but the initial riffage and stuff, you know, I, I can't do that. So um, when I was looking for new music, I, I was posting all the time. I'm like, Hey, I'm looking to collab with anybody that wants to send me stuff. I got sent a ton of material that I passed on um, simply because a lot of guys were like, you know, the majority of the stuff that was sent to me was either thrash or like new wave of British heavy metal style, or traditional metal, just that kind of stuff. And I knew I didn't want that. I wanted something that was more modern, you know, had a more modern mm-hmm. feel to it. But at sure. the same time, you know, cause a lot of the stuff I listen to personally, I listen to a lot of heavy power metal. I listen to a lot of Scandinavian, like melodic death metal. Um, and I listen to them American bands that are really heavy, like, you know, kill switch and gauge and stuff as well. So, so I like to, uh, you know, I meld those things. I also listen to a lot of symphonic metal, mm-hmm. with a little prog and, and stuff. So I like to mix all that in. So I knew going forward, I was like, you know, I want all my songs to have big choruses. Be I want there to be a hook. I want the songs to make sense, not just a whole lot of just weedle weedle, weedle guitar shred. I'll save that for Navian. You know what I mean? Uh, Navian's more of a show off band. Uh, I want my Skinner stuff to, um, you know, I want the songs to be like you said, more straightforward, make more sense, and then uh, you know, if, if it is a solo thing, it should uh, show off my voice. It should it should set a platform to where you know I'm able to do what I want over it. Sure. And uh, but lucky enough, everybody that I worked with on the album, they were very cool. You know, they would send me the the music, and they're like, "Hey, you have full reign to change it however you want." And I did. <laughs> so uh, if anything sucks on the album, I'm only the person to blame. Hundred percent. You know, we have a lot in common when it comes to that because I mean, the thing is, I'm the same when I sing. I'm the same way you are. Where you know people. Will and I'm and here's where I'm going to go with this where people will send you stuff and you're like, man, I got to restructure it 
to kind of suit what I, where I want to go with it. But the interesting thing is you talked about one of the things that you talked about was getting sent a lot of different stuff. And the thing that's funny about that is two things. One, when I do this show, I get sent a ton of music that, you know, I just, you know, you're just not into it. I might like, you know, five out of 50 records that are sent to me. But right. when you're talking about working with a musician, it's sort of the same thing. But then when you hear something that clicks with you, you know, you're like, you can write lyrics and you can write parts of that and you could arrange that pretty quickly. Like if, if it clicks with me, I can come up with vocal melodies in like five minutes. Right. Same. But if, but if it's something, but yeah, but if it's something that you're kind of like on the fence about, you're going to sit there for like, you know, weeks trying to figure out what you want to do with it. And, and then you don't. And sometimes with me, I sometimes don't want to admit to myself, man, maybe I don't like this as much as I liked it when I first heard it and it doesn't fit. But I get it, man. You know, you hear something, bam, here come the vocal melodies. Then you start arranging from there. So I completely get that. And, and yeah. it, you know, sometimes it can be frustrating because if you're looking to collaborate with somebody and you get a bunch of people like, man, you know, am I being too picky about this or you get, conf <laughs> you get conflicted? I mean, I've been there, trust me, um, but it's cool. But I think you've done really well on these two tracks. And uh, I, I have to say that I'm, I'm pretty as a music fan in general, I'm really liking the direction that you've taken your singing because even that is a little more, is a lot, is a little more melodic than the power metal band that you're in. Yeah, there's, um, I haven't, uh, what's funny is, I, so I released, um, so as of, but this last Friday, I've released three singles technically now off of, mm -hmm. off of the, uh, the upcoming album. Um, and, I have one more single that, that I'm releasing on the 10th, March 10th, called sure. Unfinished. And that's technically one of the two ballads off the album. So, um, you know, it, it gets even more, I guess, melodic <laughs> than, uh, than the stuff I've released already. Um, right. But yeah, there is, you know, for the, the, the fans that are, are into like the thrashier, heavier stuff, you know, there is one or two tracks that, haven't been released that they'll that that'll make them happy that are just you know really fast and you know blah, so. right right <laughs> yeah the other thing we have in common is that we listen to the same kind of music so right i'm on. into the, yeah, i'm into yeah. the, i'm into that scandinavian stuff myself to be honest with you um so I, I totally i totally get that were you a thrash metal guy like did you grow up really listening to those bands or mm -hmm. did you just happen to be good at singing that kind of music it, it's it's a yes and no, and and while I'll say that is because a I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, so I mean right. it, that, I mean that's thrash royalty everywhere right there. Um, so and I grew up sort of uh, rubbing elbows a little bit as I was a kid, you know, hanging out and you know, you know, meeting guys in Violence and Testament, Forbidden and Death Angel and Exodus and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then you know, as I started getting my bands together, um, we ended up playing with these bands over the years. But you know, I listened to them. But I was the guy that you know, I, I would have my in my car. This is before, just before CDs were coming out. Um, you know, I'd have my mixtapes, right, where you put the tape over the and you'd put the songs on that you want. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, it, it would jump, man. It would be you know, I'd be listening to Testament one minute, and then the next song was like Winger. Um, so it just really was whatever I liked. Uh, yeah. and I've just sort of always been that way, but, um, for the thrash thing, you know, uh, when a magic, was looking for a, a singer, I got hit up because, um, I was in, um, I was in a band. A lot of people don't know about it. It's called machine called man. And we were, I think we were a band with an identity crisis. I think the guys in the band really wanted to go that whole math metal, very progressive, very technical, um, and me, I was still figuring out what my own style was. But anyway, we had a show where we were playing. It was a sold out show and we were supporting a uh, symphony X. And, um, I guess the Magica camp happened to be there and heard me sing. Lo and behold, they were in the middle of recording what would have been their fourth album with, uh, David Michael, David Sandoval on, on vocals. He quit halfway through recording when they were in Texas recording. And, uh, they reached out to me for an audition. So I wasn't looking for her to join any kind of a thrash band. Um, but I really like the music and it just, you know, the rest is history. I, I did five albums with them. So that's good stuff. Well, that's how I first heard of you. So, I mean, obviously, you know, my introduction to your vocals, I, you know, and the thing is until I heard the last couple bands you've been in, I didn't really 
know that you could sing any differently than that. So that was <laughs> that was a pleasant surprise when I, especially these last these couple tracks that I've and, and admittedly I have not listened to the third single. I've only heard the first two, uh, okay. but but both are definitely. I mean, like I said, both are definitely very very good. And you know, for you, you know, obviously, you know, you know, you're working on a third album with uh nivian i i don't know i i always fuck that pronunciation up i guess no, but you, you but everyone says it that way so like so yeah. you're good <laughs> nivian. so so you're working on a third album so i know you got the solo thing coming out um and before we get into talking about the third album when does the solo album come out so uh so the press release is dropping this friday where it announces that the album's coming out on march 31st so if this airs before then people it, can get a, get to know ahead of time it will um, I'll be putting it up. Pre- I'll be putting it up pretty quickly. So okay. So yeah, March thirty first. Uh, so like I said, I have one more single I'll release uh, with another lyric video on March tenth, and then the actual album comes out on March thirty first. People can pre order the album uh, from my website starting this Friday, um, and then there's bundles. I have a shirt design, so if they want to get shirts and stuff. But um, so yeah, so I got that all, and, and everything I'm doing myself. I mean, I pay for everything. I'm doing literally everything. I'm releasing it myself on my own my own label. I just, I just, I'm just keeping it all in house. This is like a labor of love for me. This is my own sure. thing. Um, so I'm just doing it myself. But uh, yeah, so that comes that comes out end of March. So I'm looking. I'm excited for everyone to hear all of it. I'm actually nervous and excited for the reviews because the whole album goes out this Friday to everyone. So you'll probably get the entire thing sent to you from my PR guy, um, and you'll be able to hear the whole thing. And then I get to sit back and go like, ugh see what they think of this whole thing you know do they like it all do they think this part's crap you know so you never know it's always a a, a gamble but um i put a lot of time and effort i mean years into this and i took my time so uh i mean but it was for me so uh, but i'm hoping that other people understand the vision i was going for sure well i can tell you it's not going to take years but i don't listen to albums and make my judgment call after five minutes. I usually give it probably about at least a week or two. That's how I roll because you know how it is, man. You know, there's a lot of bands and music that I really didn't get into when I first listened to it. But then you start, especially with a lot of these albums I've been reviewing. I mean, there's a few records that haven't come out yet, but you got to let it sink in. You know, I I can't be one of these guys that listens to 30 seconds of a song and then reviews it. I mean, so there'll definitely will be a review. So I'm definitely uh, looking forward to hearing the whole thing, but I'm also definitely looking forward to pre-ordering it for myself as well, because I'm one of those crazy people that likes physical product. And, you know, you know, and my next question is, are you going to wait 10 years to release a vinyl version or is it just going to be CD only? No. So um, the thing is, um, people are always asking about Navayan vinyl. And here's here's the reason why that band we have not put out vinyl. All of our songs are like like six minutes roughly because we have two lead guitar players and we do that. I mean, we people know yeah. us. They're like, oh, they got two like fantastic shredder guys. So every song has two solo sections, so both guys can show off. Well, to, that means we can't put out a vinyl. Every album would have to be a double vinyl to fit the songs, sure. and that gets really expensive. So we've been mm-hmm. holding off on that. With the, the Skinner stuff, um, these are, you know, some song, a couple songs, a lot of songs don't even have solos. I mean, like you said, they're more straight ahead. Yeah. Some do. So it sh- I should be able to uh, work out a vinyl deal. Um, I just, I'm going to start and see how the uh, the CD sales go first. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, if I, I shouldn't say if, I absolutely am going to make vinyl for this new album. Um, and it won't be longer than a year within the, the year of its release. So Yeah. Yeah, it's always difficult. I did that. I don't know if you saw, I did that whole crazy podcast about a lot of the difficulties in the music industry and stuff like that. So if people haven't caught that, uh, that video is up there. I have my buddy Justin from a band called Workhurst. And of course, someone you might know, Mr. Sean Peck came on to be Dr. Doom with the music industry. So, but <laughs> it's actually, it's actually a pretty good, it's actually a pretty good video, but it, it actually lists a lot. And I'm going to say this on, on this show here. Um, you know, bands, unfortunately, are going through a lot of crap and getting vinyl made is absolutely a ridiculous process. So if you really want to support a band, you know, keep in mind that they do put the vinyl out. Uh, you might have to wait a while, but it will come out. And for you aficionados out there, you know, don't forget about some of these bands that have to go through this. If you really dig the band, dig the music, you know, buy the vinyl if you really like the band a lot. 
uh, but you just might have to wait for it. And unfortunately, that's a that's a reality that we are all living with. So, right. But going to the the Nivian al- uh, album that you're coming out, the third album. Uh, talk about that because I think I saw a post you were working on it, and you know I, I'm curious what that uh, what timetable you have for that and how that's coming along for you. So the uh, so yeah, I think about. Two weeks ago? I, I don't know. Uh, the weeks run together, man. Uh, but I, I finished tracking all the vocals for the third Divine album. Um, cool. And that was the final step. Uh, I think of, I think there were a, a couple key stems that, that had to be sent in. But everything's been handed over as of, uh, I think, last week to Zach Oren. He did all the production on our Ruthless Divine album, our last one. He also did all the production for my solo album. That, that you've been hearing. I mean, the mm-hmm. dude stop notch. He did the last couple machine head albums. So he, 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 he knows what he's doing. And um, yeah, so it's all in the mixed master mastering process. I know he's just been diving in this week. So we're just waiting for him to go through and give us our first, you know, here you guys go. And then us put our first batch of uh, notes together. Um, beyond that, the band, we're really trying to nail down a new drummer. Uh, that's where we're at right now. We're with we're without a drummer, so that's rough. We have to have a fill in for live shows, which is, uh, you know, it's it's not the best scenario. But um, other than that, you know, I think once the album's ready, I, I don't know. You know, we we we're we're getting we're getting ready to talk to another well known guy for potential new management because we haven't been happy with the last you know bunch of managers we've had and we've gotten rid of them, mm-hmm. um, and then that way we can work with someone to hopefully secure a new label deal. We could potentially stay with uh, Pure Steel Records, um, assuming they like the, the new album, but, you know, uh, we would like to hopefully go a little higher up on the food chain. Sure. See, see what happens. Well, you definitely, in my opinion, have the music for that. And, you know, I, I always talk about on my show, there's three elements that a band needs, right? You got to have the songs, because if you don't have that, you don't have every, any anything, right? You got to get along as as a group, and when I say get along, it doesn't mean fights won't happen. But you know, again, you got to get along enough to stay together. And then the third, and one of the most important things, is a good management company. You know, and if you listen to bands that have been around for a long time that have made things work, management, you know, good management to promote a band is is super important. I mean, I just did this interview with uh, with. Um, Last couple of interviews that they were, you know, a couple of guys in Halloween, they talked about, and I can attest to this, they talked about their management being an instrumental part of that band really doing as well as they are. And, you know, you have the music for it, you know, getting the drummer obviously is going to be challenging because the music you're playing is definitely not something that is very easy to play. You got to have the right guy to be able to do that. But I really think musically you guys are there. It's just a matter of getting the exposure is really where it goes. Yeah, the like, the man, like I said, the management companies we've had, they just um, a lot of talk, right? Mm-hmm. So everything we've pretty much been self managed ourselves um, with me doing the bulk of, of all business. Um, so I'm sort of the driving force on the on the back end, but I don't want to be, you know. <laughs> I'd like to to hand that off to someone, but every it seems every time I do, um, things don't really move the way we want. Everything slows down mm-hmm. and things aren't happening. Um, so, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what this new, this is like every album is a new chapter, right? So right. new album, new chapter, hopefully new management. We'll, we'll just see what happens. And, you know, and hopefully with each album, we can gain a little more exposure, a little more fan base and just keep, keep working on, you know, I mean, I've never, I, I, I didn't get into music thinking, Oh, I want to be you know rich, famous and all this stuff. I just wanted to make music. So, um, you know, so, so I, I could retire tomorrow with no regrets, you know what I mean? But but that doesn't mean that I still don't want to, you know, keep keep the band growing and keep things happening and, and opportunities. So sure. We'll see Ab- what happens. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I, I like again, I've liked the first two albums by that band. And I think I think you really find your niche there uh, as far as the kind of stuff you're doing. I'm curious, the new music on this, you know, upcoming album for Navian or I, I don't I don't know I hate I hate trying to pronounce two different things but the, the new <laughs> music on it how do you how do you compare it to the first couple records uh the first the first album was very polished um in production wise um yeah. but musically 
uh, that, that, that first album wasn't written cohesively as like a, a, everyone coming together and being like, let's create songs. Mm-hmm. That was a bunch of guys that had song ideas from wherever the band they were in or whatever they were working on coming together. And then us just hashing out the details. Right. And you know, you got sort of a core sound. I mean, um, but then with the second album, Ruthless Divine, that whole album, that's, I mean, that's Nevian. You listen to it. That's what the band sounds like. That's mm-hmm. all of us. Right. You know, everyone's songwriting and putting their ideas in together and us making these songs from beginning to end. The third album really picks up literally right where that one um, left off. Uh, the only difference is, I would say, is uh, we do tend to go a little heavier on a few tracks. Uh, you know, a little more like sort of an arch enemy type Amon Amarth a little bit on a couple things. Sure. Um, and then at the same time, some of the songs, you know, I'm I'm – definitely putting a little more of the uh the big the big open melody melodic stuff in there um a little more feel to it you know not every song is about swords and power and battle you know i actually put in uh, some songs that steer clear of that whole power metal thing and, and uh have to do more with like emotions and things like that which is what i do a lot of on my upcoming solo album is um is mainly i try to you know just more human than, than story, I guess. Sure. Well, I always say that usually a band hits their stride in the second and third album. I think, and you're right. It's interesting you bring that up about the first uh, Nevine album because it, it did. It doesn't have the cohesiveness that the second record does. Uh, I remember when I listened to them, uh, they both sounded good, but the second album, musically, in my opinion, you know, you, you have to work. And the thing is, you have to work with guys for a certain period of time to really get a feel for their songwriting and where they're going with the, with the direction that their music's going and to really get that chemistry together as a band. I mean, you know, unfortunately, sadly, I mean, if you think about it, how many bands really very few bands nail it on a debut, right? You know, right. so <laughs> typically, I mean, there's very few bands out there where they come out with a debut album and it happens. And then the other albums really aren't as good, but, realistically most bands it's a second or third usually it's the third album for most of them but it's the second or third record that they make that really is where they they really hit their stride and so i think the second album was definitely much better than the first i think it the mu- musically it's elevated a lot because now you go from having these scattered ideas to now you have okay we're going to do a, an album from scratch you're the singer I have in mind for it instead of, you know, bringing stuff from my previous band. And then you write this really great album. So I'm curious too, because, you know, you, you got to evolve too. So the heavier stuff and not writing about, you know, skulls and people getting their heads cut off or, you know, whatever, it, it's also a deviation. It's just an involvement of what you're doing. And I actually, you know, I like the fact that you're telling me it's going to be a little bit heavier, to be honest with you in certain spots. So that'll be interesting to, to hear. And do you have an album title or are you just not revealing that yet? Yeah. We just haven't mentioned anything yet. We got, we got the album artwork. Um, okay. We got the title, everything, but I mean, it's literally just, just been sent for mixing. So I'm not allowed to really say anything yet. No, that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I totally, I totally get it, you know, and, and I get it, you know, and I get it's a challenge. You know, if you're doing a lot of this stuff yourself, I can tell you that, when I started computing numbers and looking at what bands are going through, I, I almost felt like there was no light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, there is some light, obviously, in my opinion, but I, you know, musicians now, I mean, let's face it, you know, musicians, any kind of creative, let's say it's not even just musicians, photographers, a lot of us are underappreciated in society these days. So I get it. It's an uphill battle. The cost of everything is skyrocketed, you know, for then. So it's, and then not only that, but, I can tell you that from my personal perspective that it's it's a lot harder for bands to get noticed because there's a lot of stuff out there. There's, there's more qual- quantity than quality, right? Oh, yeah. So finding a, a band like you guys, you know, I knew you existed and I knew about your vocals, but the thing is there's so much crap that comes at me. I'm kind of a latecomer to it, admittedly. Um, that's why I'm like, man, I heard one song and I'm like, I got to get this guy's records. <laughs> so... And and again, you had them with me pretty quick. A hey, better late than never. I mean, that's the, the, that term works perfectly in this instance. I mean, you know, there's a lot of times, even for me, you know, there's 
I'll hear about a band for like 10, 15 years. And then finally I'm like, all right, I'm going to go back and check out their like seven albums they got. You know, I mean, that's how fan bases grow, right? We're, we're not all at the party early. So no, not at all. (laughs) Yeah. It's funny because a publicist will send me the same email about the same band. And once I get like the 10th or 11th email, and I'm like, you know, I, I might want to download the promo and check the band out, you know, and it happens. I mean, there's, there's a, quite a few records that I, I kind of missed the boat on last year. It just, you just don't have the time to check all that stuff. Oh, out. There's, I mean, there's, there's too much stuff. There's always way too much stuff out there. And now it's so easy to get your hands on and, and it's easy to make. I mean, you can have one guy who's like, I'm going to do everything here in front of my computer. I'm going to put this album out and then there's an album and there's some new yeah. things. So yeah, it's way easier to make content. So. It's a it's a good and a bad thing in a sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, more stuff like people like like yourself or even me. It's a lot easier and not quite as expensive to put a record out, say, as it was thirty years ago. I mean, it's just you don't have to deal with analog tape and you know these studios charge an insane amount of money per hour or per project or whatever. You know, right. so it's it's gotten mm-hmm. less expensive, and not only that, but it's a little easier to to write music because you don't have to use four track tape players. I don't know if you use those back in the day, but I used to use these in my f- studio in the rehearsal studios. We do little four track demos and things. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's kind of, I had the little Fostex four track tape player. That's what I used to demo stuff on back in the day. Um, but so I, yeah, I'm really digging it, man. So um, the solo album comes out March 31st. Uh, do you have a timetable for the third uh, a Nivane album. We would like, I mean, uh, ultimately we'd like it released this year. I mean, okay. we're looking like fall, winter, assuming everything goes well. Um, I would normally say, I mean, I see the whole thing being mixed and mastered this spring. Okay. Now that basically said, makes me think, okay, well, summer's out because we need to shop and then the, the you know label will want at least a three month promo push, et cetera. Yeah. So fall, winter this year is, is probably my best guess. Yeah, it's it's definitely you got to put some marketing into it. You know, yeah. definitely the promo push. <laughs> no, getting to be stuff. one of those bands straight to the merch table. Here's our new album. It comes out tomorrow. You can get it at our show. No, no, no. <laughs> right, right. Or you know, oh my God, you know, you got to prep and you got to prep the pre order in advance because. Mm-hmm these factories get overbooked with stuff you know you'll get like you'll get like taylor swift and adele like making a million vinyls and clogging up the system (laughs) no like like they've done for a a lot of then that's probably that's part of the that's part of what has happened and then you know you had a couple vinyl factories burned down you know over the course a lot of people don't realize this there was a big factory i don't know if it was out by you but it was definitely here in the u.s and it there was some kind of issue and it and it ended up burning down and that really screwed a lot of things up because a yeah, lot I do of know that, uh, I do know that the uh, when I was ordering the uh, the CDs from upcoming album, they did there was a disclaimer that said any vinyl orders you're looking at about six months minimum. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense. Yeah, and that yeah, and it happened a while back. So hey, man, I got to tell you, uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to your solo album, and I can tell you, I guarantee you, I will, I will review it. Okay. Um, so it's definitely something if, if you're here on the show, you're definitely on my radar. So it's definitely right not on. something I'm going to, I'm going to overlook or that I'm going to pass by. I'm actually, once I checked out the tracks, I think once you put out the second song, I think when I first got a hold of you, uh, I definitely was really digging the songs and actually listened to them while doing some work here, um, on my computer. Um, I definitely checked those out as well. I mean, definitely some cool stuff, man. So any last words for anybody uh, before we end off this interview? Uh, any last yep. words for people that, because you definitely have a following of people uh, that are going to be checking this out. And any last words for those people? Uh, no, I mean, um, you know, people that are already fans of me know where to find me. Uh, NormanSkinner.net. That's like your one-stop shop. All my socials are there, everything. Um, but that's also where anybody that's hearing this for the first time, um, check it out. You know, um, I, I, as you know, I've been in a lot of different bands. I've released a lot of different styles of things. So, um, if, if there are any Spotify users, uh, there's actually Norman Skinner ultimate, uh, playlist. It's like 180 songs or 160 songs that I've released, um, on, with, you know, different albums and stuff. And then if they go to my website, there's even more, I, I built my own playlist on there where they could really get sick of me 
within a day. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm just thank everyone for the support. Thanks for having me on. And I'm just going to keep continuing to, to put out hopefully quality music. Um, and it, hopefully it won't take, now I'm just concentrating on, uh, Navayan and really my, my own solo project. So it shouldn't take another eight years for the next one. I could see someone like making a shirt that says Norman Skinner ultimate <laughs> listen, listening to the the Spotify playlist. I, I've never, I don't usually use streaming services, but it is a way to discover bands. I mean, sure. it is what it, it is what it is. And um, I definitely look forward to this uh, solo release. And uh, of course the third uh, Nevane album, whenever that does come out. And I, I'll tell you what, uh, I think that, you know, I know you've done a lot of stuff musically, but this stuff's, the stuff you're doing now is a lot more refined and you know, you have to take, I mean, and it takes time, you know, so right. um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So March 31st is the solo album. Uh, check it out and you can go to normanskinner.net, Correct. And that's where we, you can order it. So, and you start ordering it this Friday to 24th, February 24th. Right. Is that what you said? Correct. Okay. So, so as long as basically if they, if they do the pre-orders will be, running starting this Friday all the way up till the day of. And um, if they order CDs, they'll all be shipped out. Actually, I'll probably end up shipping some of them out early so to see if they can get it the day of. Um, if they are doing any bundles that include shirts, because you can, um, the shirts are, uh, it's like a made to order. There'll be an additional two weeks later that that'll send, uh, ship out. So Okay. But it's all in there when they click on it and descriptions and all that stuff. Man. Uh, awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you.